So today's lesson is all about inductors, but we're going to draw a parallel between capacitors and inductors. Our overview is that we've talking about symbols, uh, intuition, what it tries to keep constant, math, by the way, always power is equal to I times V, no matter what component we're talking about, even components we haven't yet introduced. DC response, uh, construction. What else do we talk about? Series versus parallel. And last, how things work with op -ends. It's easiest to understand what conductors do by seeing how similar or different they are to capacitors. So let's start off with, um, with the symbol. For capacitors, two parallel lines. And we say it might have um, maybe two microfarads as a typical capacitance. And that would be the symbol is C. An inductor, the symbol looks like a coil of wire. And we might say it has four millihenries of inductance. And since it would be very confusing to use I as a, uh, as a symbol, uh, we've already using that for current, we'll use L. Okay, so what is the intuition behind what a capacitor does? Kyle, what's our hydrodynamic intuition? Perhaps a capacitor at its core is a device that stores charge that is given to it over a period of time, and then it will release it when required to or when it's deemed to. Yeah, I love that. It stores charge. How does it, in fact, I'm going to just generalize that a little bit. It stores energy, and it sure does. Do you remember what kind of field it stores the energy in? It stores it in an electric field. Yeah, that's it. What's our intuition for the hydrodynamic analogy of a capacitor? It would be an equivalent of, it essentially just, it would essentially equivalent to something of a storage tank. As that's the best analogy I could come up for it. I'm going to say a diaphragm. Okay. And the reason why I'm going to say a diaphragm is better than a storage tank is that in a storage tank, you just have stuff coming in. Whereas with a diaphragm, you can see that if you've got, <laughs> one amp going into a capacitor, you also have one amp coming out of the capacitor. It's just storing up that, that energy inside that elastic membrane, as opposed to what a capacitor does, which is storing up that energy inside a, inside a magnetic field. Okay. Now for an inductor, we're gonna say it's water inertia in a long pipe. You may have encountered this before, as a cadet, say you've got a uh, water pressure. So you've got a pipe going into the barracks. And it's a really long pipe, right? Because it services all the barracks. I'm going to just do my best to draw it as a coil it in there as a loop. In fact, uncoiled, it would be the pipe that goes all through barracks. If I was a better artist, I could probably get this right there, something like that. Anyway, <clears throat> squirreled in there. And you've got the water faucet open inside the restroom. Water comes out and everything's fine. Suddenly, here's a little, there's a switch. Suddenly, you turn the faucet off. The switch closes instantaneously. Has anyone ever heard of a, uh, a thump? It's called a, a water hammer that happens if you suddenly turn off the water pressure. Maybe in an older house, you can hear it too. Um, it's a thump and what's happening is that you've got so much water in this pipe and it's got a certain amount of inertia to it that when you open the faucet, it's no problem. It just takes a little bit of time for the water to start to flow. But if you close it instantly, when it goes from a flowing condition to a non-flowing condition, it's, there's this huge water inertia. It might be 10 pounds of water in the entire or 50 pounds of water in the entire system that all of a sudden has to go from flowing to non-flowing and it builds up this huge voltage pressure. 
and you'll hear it as a as a as a bang. And that's called a, a water hammer. And that's exactly like if you had a voltage source here. And there's always some pipe resistance, right? But you're sending it through this inductor. And we've got a shoot. We've got a switch here. And this is a very small R. We close the switch, current goes through. And when the current goes through the time, it's gonna start off at zero because of the inertia in the pipe. And over a period of time, it's gonna rise up. After a long time, it's almost as if the inductor isn't there at all. It doesn't matter how much water is in your pipes because it's flowing, it's not resisting anymore. The only thing that's resisting is this resistor. So if this was V and if this was R, after a long time, um, Jesse, and after a really long time in this circuit, if eventually the, the inductor just doesn't matter, what would the maximum current be in the circuit up here? Wouldn't it be constant? It will be. And what will it be? It'll be set by this V, this voltage pressure, and this resistance. And so what will it be? Switch is closed. You've got a simple circuit. The inductor no longer matters after a long time. You've just got a voltage source and a single resistor. What will the current be? Can you help her, Jonathan? Uh, you, you said what will the current be over a long period of time? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it just be at that line over there where it's constant? And what is that line in terms of V and R? Voltage source and resistance. Oh, v over R. V over R by Ohm's law. So eventually it'll be V over R, but it'll take a while to get there. And that's well, what happens. Will now, it ever actually, sorry. Go on. Will it ever actually reach that point? I mean, I thought it would just be like where, I thought it would just simply, where it will just infinitely try to attempt to reach that point, but never actually get there. That's right. It'll never quite get there. But after, after a short time, it'll get so close that you won't be able to measure the difference. For the example in the faucet that I gave, you probably reach steady state after maybe half a second. So you don't even notice it, the difference. But it's true, it never quite reaches there. There's always a tiny exponential. We'll get there in the math shortly. Let's see, what does the voltage look like across this inductor though? So initially, when you first turn on the faucet, what's that voltage gonna look like? Uh, Bobby, when you first turn on the faucet, you've got your full voltage here. You've got no current flowing. So there's no voltage dropped by the resistor. So what does this voltage equal? Zero. Well, it can't be zero because if there's no voltage here and there's no voltage here, but you've got a voltage here, then the sums of the voltages don't add to zero, right? So Maybe you guys are struggling because I'm because I'm I've got it in terms of just generic voltages. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make voltages. it specific. I'm going to say 100 volts here, and I'm going to say this is a 10 ohm resistor. And so now let's put in actual numbers. This would be 10 amps flowing because it's 100 over 10. Now, Bobby, tell me what this initial voltage is at time equals zero. There's 100, 100. volts across here. And so it's got to be a full 100 because there's nothing else that's dropping it. So the voltage, so I'm going to draw a voltage in red. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw it right underneath it. I want you to get the in intuition here. Here's the voltage across that inductor. So it's gonna start off at hundred volts. And then as time goes on, as the speed builds up, there'll be less and less voltage dropped across it. And it'll eventually go down to, down to arbitrarily close to zero. Anyway, if you see the intuition, the math just sort of takes care of itself, but I wanna make sure you all see that intuition. Is that a thumbs up? Anyone wanna? Ask about that. Hey, sir, why, uh, can you say again why the first resistor at T equals zero doesn't get any voltage drop? Sure, it doesn't because of this inductor. And what I'm telling you is that because of the, the way that the inductor works, it cannot instantly change current through it. And since we had zero current flowing when the switch was closed, the moment you open it, just because the water's got some mass to it, it takes a fraction of a second, maybe a tenth of a second, maybe a hundredth of a second for it to start to flow. 
And so when it first, when you first open up this, this, this uh, faucet, since there was no current flowing over here, right there, infinitesimally before it was opened, there's no current flowing right here infinitesimally after the faucet was opened. And it will take time just because of the inertia of that water for it to start to flow. Maybe instead of thinking of something relatively light like water, think about something very thick and heavy like molasses. You can get molasses to flow at a constant rate after a while, but it will take a while for it to start. Does that make more sense? Yes, sir. So the reason why we get, why we have no current flowing through initially is entirely because of the inductor. If not for the inductor, you would instantly jump right up to 10 amps and it would stay there. All right, now let's just see what happens when we suddenly open the circuit. When we open the circuit, the current must flow down to zero right away, right? It has to. But what happens to this voltage? We've got this in our, in our system here because we've got all this current flowing. It wants to keep the current constant. It wants to try to keep, let's see, what we, did we have? We had 10 amps, 10 gallons per second of water flowing. This thing, just by the inertia of the water, wants to keep 10 gallons of, of water flowing. So what will happen to the voltage pressure across it if there's no water flowing here, but there's 10 gallons of water flowing here? Can you see that very quickly, there'll be a really, really high pressure built up over here as it's trying to force the water in from nowhere. And as the water is being pulled out, the switch is closed now, it's gonna get a really, really negative pressure over here. So in other words, it will resist that by developing a massive voltage across it, which will quickly, very, very quickly go back down to zero as everything normalizes. Do you get that intuition? If you get the intuition, the math is easy. If you don't get the intuition, the math is just all mysterious.